Welcome to Green is Good, and we're so excited today and honored to have our good friend Jeffrey Hollander on. He's the co-founder, former CEO of 7th Generation. He's one of the leading people on corporate responsibility, sustainability, and social equity, and he also teaches at my alma mater, NYU. Welcome back to Green is Good, Jeffrey Hollander. Happy to be here. Hey, Jeffrey, you are one of the truly pioneers and thought leaders in the sustainability revolution. Um, it's so so great to have you back because there's so many topics you get to speak on and touch on, and so we're going to just have fun today because there's you're just you're involved with so many great uh, things going on sustainability wise. Share a little bit about where we are today in 2013. Are you optimistic when you wake up? Or are you pessimistic? Well, I tend to be optimistic, despite the fact that the uh, situation and the facts uh, would certainly challenge that optimism. Um, But, you know, I I think to do the work that we do, uh, we always have to stay focused on the possibilities and not get overwhelmed by the challenges and negative information that surrounds us. You know, that, that's so true. And, you know, a shameless plug here, you know, Jeffrey, I'm not only, a, you know, a friend of what you do, but I'm also a huge fan, and you're, you've been so inspirational to me. There is not a soap in my house right now, whether it's our dishwasher, whether it's our laundry, that's not seventh generation. So you were truly one of the great pioneers creating brands that can change lives household by household as as America is now becoming more ingrained with regards to cultural and DNA sustainability and stuff like that. So I thank you for all you've done in your creation of seventh generation and how that's moved the needle already. But talk a little bit about the, you know, the stock market this morning is over 15,000. Again, we're hitting new highs. Some people are doing really well as the new normal, um, you know, in theory is thriving, but there's still a, there's still an underlying toughness that's going on. There's still an underbelly to to the economy, and there's people that we're leaving behind. Explain the disparity and the paradox that exists in America, and how that's affecting where we're going as a country. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a very challenging and quite upsetting situation because there are a handful of people that are doing very well, and that's not just the wealthiest ten percent, but it's really the wealthiest one percent and one tenth of one percent. And you do see, uh, you know, that segment of our society continuing to accumulate massive amounts of wealth. Uh, But the challenge we face is that that wealth is spread increasingly unevenly. We are a country that, unlike uh, almost the rest of the developed world, has a greater disparity between the rich and the poor. We've got, you know, two million children that are homeless. We've got 50 or 60 million people living in poverty. And all of the economic gains that really come from things like the rise of the stock market uh, are, are not and never were trickling down to those that really need that most. And that's because we've designed the economy, unfortunately, in a way that that continues to concentrate and accumulate wealth in the hands of a, a small number of people. You know, that's on 60 Minutes and some other of these shows, I've seen these um, stories on large corporations, brands that we all know that are iconic brands in the United States, setting up offices or setting up some form of tax shelters in Ireland and other countries. How is that even possible given where we are as a country and the fact that we need more taxes to support the infrastructure of this country and reinvent ourselves. What's going on in that kind of uh, um, crazy disparity? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we, you know, corporate tax payments uh, as a share of profits are at the lowest level they've been in 40 years. And we have, uh, you know, more than cut in, in down by 75% the amount of money that large corporations contribute to our economy through taxes. And what we've done is we've created a very elaborate system uh, for large companies to avoid taxes. And I'll, I'll give you a, a stark example. Okay. Um, 
you know, companies like General Electric, which are one of the biggest companies uh, we we have globally, uh, have paid an average of less than 5% in taxes for the last five years. Wow. And even Starbucks, you know, I, I go to Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> I, I like many of the things they do. But in England, where they've been doing business for a decade, they haven't paid a dime of taxes. Wow. And they, they are able to legally avoid those taxes by shifting the profits they make into countries that have no or very low tax rates. So they siphon off of all the profits in England and transfer those profits through complicated legal means to countries like Belgium or Switzerland, where the tax rate is much lower. And thus, and I think this is, this is you know, it's immoral, but unfortunately not criminal. Um, you know, here these companies are utilizing our education system, they're utilizing our highways, they're utilizing our police force and our fire uh, fighters, and they're not contributing. Uh, those contributions are being made by our citizens, and in many cases, citizens who really can't afford to, to pay those taxes. And that's so well put. You know, and for our listeners out there who are, are not familiar with your history, I don't want to shortchange that in that, Jeffrey, you're, you're truly one of the great entrepreneurial pioneers, but also one of the uh, great, um, how do I say this right, leaders of the sustainability movement with, with, with the creation of ASBC. Before we go into anything more right now, I want you to share a little bit about, just give our listeners a little thumbnail sketch of what you created at 7th Generation, what a great company you did. You were truly, you know, it's become part of our vernacular and lexicon now, this term conscious capitalist, but you were truly one of the original pioneers of conscious capitalism. What you did at 7th Generation and how you also co founded the uh, ASBC and, and what you're doing now. Can you share a little bit of that history? Sure. I mean, you know, in some ways I feel like my whole history is really about doing what we used to understand in this country as the, the right thing and the just thing and the equitable thing rather than what's necessarily legal. Um, and Seventh Generation, for all of its great products, was really about creating a new model of business and really proving that, that business can do the right thing by its customers, by its community stakeholders, as well as its investors. Right. And, you know, we, we instituted things like salary caps. I mean, in large companies hmm. today, the CEO is often making 500 times what the lowest paid person is doing. Right. We limited that to 17 to 1. And in my new business, which we'll talk about later, yeah. I've lowered it to 10 to 1. Wow. Um, so it's, it's, we also were very proud to make every single one of our employees owners of the company by transferring 1% of the ownership of the company to our employees every year. So a lot of what we did was about using capitalism in a different way. You know, <clears throat> capitalism is not one monolithic economic structure. It can be practiced in a whole variety of ways. And what we're facing today in the United States is the practice of capitalism in a is really harmful and destructive to the citizens of the country, as well as to our environment and, in many cases, the rest of the world. ASBC, the American Sustainable Business Council, which I founded with David Levine three years ago, is really an attempt to rally mm. those conscious, responsible businesses to get involved in public policy, because public policy is the framework and the structure that has allowed many of these terrible things to happen. So today, ASBC has over 200,000 small and medium-sized business members who are fighting for things like making sure that we don't lose the rights to health care that we, we so recently won, fighting for uh, a higher minimum wage. I mean, it's ridiculous that in this country, if you make the minimum wage, you're living in poverty. What is the point of defining a minimum wage that, if paid to individuals, ensures that they live with their families in poverty? We're also fighting for uh, safer chemicals and making sure that chemicals which are poorly regulated today are better regulated so that people can trust that the products they purchase are going to be safe for them and their families. Hmm. So, you know, and, and this is what makes you great. Like you said at the top of the show, 
you don't get to do all this great work without a greater sense of optimism, no matter how bad the news is around us. So talk a little bit about some of your favorite companies, other companies besides the great seventh generation, which, again, shameless plug, it's it, for those listeners out there that haven't had the opportunity to, to enjoy their great products, go to a store that carries seventh generation and buy just one or two and try it in your household. It will change the way you, 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 you do business in your own house. And it's so important because as Jeffrey pointed out on the last show that he was on, we're using stuff in our house that has chemicals that has never been tested and, and that could be very potentially harmful to your family and to the environment at large. Um, for those who just joined us, our listeners who just joined us, we're on with seven, uh, seven, Seventh Generation founder uh, Jeffrey Hollander. You could read more about what Jeffrey's up to. Some amazing things at www.jeffreyhollander.com. Jeff, talk a little bit about some of your favorite companies, some of the brands out there that are getting it right, that are doing the right thing. Although they're successful and making a ton of dough, they're doing the right thing with regards to their greater role in the, in the economy, in the environment, in the, in, in the, in the world at large. Yeah. For many years, those favorite companies tended to be smaller businesses or medium-sized businesses like Patagonia, uh, Organic Valley, what we're seeing today that is really encouraging is that we have some very large multinational companies. Uh, two of my favorites are Unilever and a company called Kingfisher, which is the largest uh, home improvement chain in Europe, like uh, our Home Depot in Lowe's. Hmm. And we have companies like Unilever that have made a commitment over the next decade to improve the lives of a billion people, to cut their footprint, their environmental and social footprint on the planet in half, and to ensure that 100% of the agricultural products they purchase are sustainably produced. Kingfisher has even gone a step further. They have uh, developed the concept called net positive. They reject the notion that by reducing our negative impact on the world, that is good enough. And, and what they want to do is they want to have a net positive impact. They don't want to just reduce CO2 emissions, but they want to ensure that every house they do business with is generating its own power with zero CO2 emissions. They don't want to just use sustainably harvested lumber, but they want to rebuild and replant all of our forests that have, have been decayed. So that is, is inspiring. It's really inspiring to me when a very large company embraces this type of philosophy because it really says that there's no excuse for other large companies not to be doing the same thing. I, I, you know, you're, I, I get what you mean, and I, that makes a lot of sense. You know, to, you, know you are... Great folks like you that are s ultra creative and have tons of energy um, are, are typically serial entrepreneurs. You created Seventh Generation. You've co-founded the ASBC, which is just every year getting bigger, stronger, and doing better things. Talk a little bit about your next venture. You know your you know the post Seventh Generation post and which is you know ongoing ASBC life. Talk about what your next entrepreneurial venture looks like and what you're 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 dreaming up right now. Sure. Um, well, again, I wanted to create a model of this net positive company. So I wanted to create a business that wasn't less bad, but was truly restorative and helps repair the world and the people that live here. So we are launching a new company called Sustain. It will be the first fair trade sustainable condom company uh, in the United States. And we are ensuring that throughout the supply chain, uh, unfortunately, uh, latex, which is sort of capped like maple sugar from trees and then turned into rubber, uh, there are children working in almost every rubber plantation all over the world, wow. children that aren't going to school, that aren't getting the health care they need. So fair trade is just critical and foundational in terms of starting the supply chain. We also were using a plantation that is FSC certified, so we know that plantation is managed in a sustainable way. We then have revised the manufacturing process. Unfortunately, uh, though it's hard to believe, condoms are made in a way that produces carcinogenic chemicals, 
and we have redesigned that manufacturing process to minimize those chemicals and to ensure there's no detectable toxins in any of our products. And we're also launching uh, a new initiative. I'm doing this with my daughter, Mika, who's just graduating from business school, and my wife, Sheila. And we are launching something called 10% for Women, where 10% of our profits and the profits of other companies who join with us will go to help uh, low-income women who don't have the care they need from a reproductive health care perspective. So it's going to be a great product. It's going to be uh, a better condom for better sex and a better world. Whoa, now th- help me here. So sus- a portion of Sustain's profits are going to go to 10% for women? Yes, we will, we, we will take 10% of our profits every year and invest them in this new organization that will initially focus on very low-income women in the southern part of the United States where there are the highest rates of venereal disease, the highest rates of child pregnancy. You would think they were living in, in a developing country rather than a developed country. That is so great. So you're so um, Micah and Mika and and Sheila are going to be running ten percent for women. Well, they're going to be doing more than that. They're going to be <laughs> you know full partners with me in and sustain as well. Wow. And uh, Mika will be the spokesperson for the new brand. That is awesome. This is just great news. This is this is really taking everything you've ever done in terms of entrepreneurial genius, uh, breaking through. Uh, you know, creating new paradigms, but also interrelating it with both uh, social good and also um, creating more jobs and creating, uh, uh, you know, becoming part of the new economy on every level. This is fascinating. So when does Sustain launch and where can people, our listeners, buy it? Well, we'll have a website up by the end of the year so people can buy online, and we'll be shipping product to stores all over the United States by the end of the year. What has been like when, you know, when, you know, we're down to two and a half minutes, and of course, I want to spend another 20 with you, and we're going to have you back on, of course, when this launches, and we're going to have your wife and daughter on with you because this really needs a greater platform and, and, and a longer time on Green is Good to talk about this. We have to have you all back, and we'll do a whole hour with you next time. What is, when is 10% for women launch? Well, it'll be launching the same time as the brand does, so it'll be probably up and running next year. Okay. So when and you walk in, Jeffrey, I'm going to interrupt you. So when you start making phone calls again, and we are starting like almost from scratch again, you know, like when the, almost like the first day when you started Seventh Generation, now you're starting Sustain, and you're calling people, and now this time you're saying, I got a new product, I've created, I've got a, you know, a condom. What's the, what do people say? What's the, what's the other side of the line look like? feel like? Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I must say, even though I've been incredibly successful and have, have made a lot of people money, it's still hard to raise capital for a startup. Yeah. It's one thing for yeah. people to invest in an already successful business, but the first thing you have to do is you, you have to convince investors that not only do you have an incredible, impactful, and important social mission, yep. but that they're also going to make uh, yeah. make money on their That's investment. Right. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm deep in the midst of raising that money. I'm about halfway done. I hope to be done by the end of the month. But, you know, this is one of the real challenges. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky because I'm older and I've established a pretty good network yeah. of people that I know. But it is really challenging for younger people to raise the capital for their own businesses. And, again, one of the things that ASBC fought so hard for, which is this crowdfunding platform, I think will be transformative for helping younger people particularly start new green businesses because they will have access to capital in a way that, that I never did. Well, you're absolutely right, and, our, and, and, and unfortunately we're at the end here today, but this is not the end. This is a, uh, a dialogue that we're going to continue, and, and, and towards the end of the year, um, I want to have you and your wife and your daughter back on to talk about uh, sustain and also 10% for women and the launch and, and, and just the whole mission. Have all three of you on with us, and we'll spend the whole hour that day with all of you explaining um, the whole package. Because that's just such a great new model. Your wife and daughter, this is a family affair. And for all of you out there, go to Jeffrey's website, JeffreyHollander.com. Learn more about the great things he's up to. Jeffrey Hollander, I'm honored to have you on. You're the pioneer of conscious capitalism and an inspirational thought leader and truly living proof that green is good.